Thanks for coming back to my channel, everybody. So I struggle with opening up my videos. I don't know what it is, but there's just something about saying hello, everyone, that I think every YouTuber says, and it bothers me, and I'm trying to figure out a way to say hello to everybody without saying hello, everyone. I think it's because I'm an informational kind of person. I like to say things that have a purpose, and I know saying hello is purposeful, but there's no value behind it. But I will say this, which I believe has value. I appreciate every subscriber I have. When I started the channel, I had no idea the kind of feedback I would get. I didn't even know if anybody would care. But the amount of commenting, emails, and messages I get between Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube is amazing. I didn't think anybody would actually care about my channel, but now that I see how many people do, I'm trying my hardest to make sure I have continuity on all the videos and it's not just anything posted. I want things that have a purpose. So the purpose of this video is about a month ago, I posted a video where I did welding with a professional welder at East Coast Supercharging. We were welding aluminum. It was my first time welding with, uh, I believe it was a MIG welder. I can't remember offhand. I should have done some homework before I filmed this, but I believe it was a MIG welder. And he explained different types of welders between TIG welding, stick welding, a spool gun, and then a MIG welder. So since then, I had a lot of people messaging me about how to learn how to aluminum weld on a budget. For example, if you go out and get the gas that's required, a spool gun, a expensive welder that can handle those items, you might be at $1,000 on the lowest budget. And then let's say you get a welder that's a professional welder, like the one you saw in that video was roughly $3,000. And I think if you watch a video on Tyler Ray getting his new welder, he spent like $5,000. So aluminum welding can get pretty expensive. So the purpose of my video was I, I went out and got the cheapest welder I could possibly find. This thing was $75. I don't know how good it's gonna be. I saved opening it up and trying it out for the first time for filming this video. So what I learned along the way, you guys are gonna see in real time. I don't know what the outcome's gonna be, but at the end of the video, we're both gonna see. I'm gonna unbox it. I'm going to go through what you get in the box and then I'm gonna try using it and we'll see what happens. The reason for this was uh, my other video inspired a bunch of people to want to learn how to weld. I, I didn't expect it. Even if it's one person, the fact that somebody was inspired makes me happy. But the amount of people that came my way looking for guidance on how to weld aluminum on a budget, it was amazing. So those of you that are new to my channel, the channel is about me owning a car collection, being able to do things on a budget, and doing my own repairs on my collection. The reason why that's important is over the course of 11 years, I put this collection together. Buying the car is cheap. Making repairs sometimes could cost more than what you paid for the car. And if you're not doing things on your own, then you may have to sell that car. Especially if you have another car that's expensive, you might have to sell one to pay for another one's repairs. So I try to avoid that. So my channel is about doing quality repairs on a budget and also maintaining these cars. And I had to come up with tricky things along the way that I like to film. So I decided to make the channel so I could share some of the stuff I do. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set you guys up on the tripod and then you guys can see what we do with this welder. All right, the first thing I wanna do is open up the box. So let me just move this stuff out of the way. All right, so I went out and bought these rods. They're 4043 aluminum filler rod. These should have flux on them. Flux is a chemical that removes the oxygen from the weld area to allow the metal to adhere to each other or bond, I should say. Uh, give me a minute, I need a knife. Okay, so this is the filler rod. The white stuff that you see on there is flux. Uh, again, this removes oxygen from the equation. So doing this allows you to uh, not have to use a welding gas, which is why it makes this process cheaper. All right, that's the welder's ground. That's, this is where the stick would go. Oh, well, that's good. I was actually going to tell you guys to buy a wire brush, but it comes with one. Oh, it comes with a, a fake welding mask. That's, that's pretty cool, actually. 
I don't know how good that is, but we'll try that as well. Well, I cut my finger taking the stuff out of there. I actually got it caught on here, so give me a sec to go uh, take care of my finger. Okay, took care of my finger. It's not a Band-Aid, but it stopped the bleeding. Well, I guess this helps with your budget if you have this little makeshift uh, welding mask. It is by no means auto dimming. I guess it's handy because you could hold it up over your face. So, but the problem is you, uh, you only have one hand available, so it's not really the greatest tool, but it is very dark, so it could work. All right, so this says earth. I'm assuming that means ground. And on this side says torch. Hopefully this thing turns on. Oh yeah, look at that. Being that I'm gonna practice welding on aluminum, I'm gonna leave this on a low amperage. Let's start with like 35. Aluminum is very thin and you might burn right through the metal. All right, but let's go over a couple things first. Okay, I wanted to go over a few things. So for starters, if you're gonna get into welding, you're gonna need gloves, things get hot, and at least a, a basic pair of mechanic gloves that you can get at the store, like, you know, AutoZone, Advanced Auto, or Home Depot. You can get them for like 12 bucks. Uh, this is just various metal. You can buy aluminum at Home Depot. Uh, you can get like a long thing of aluminum, a long piece of metal for uh, maybe $10 here. I might have some over here. So you can get this aluminum in a longer strip for like, actually it might even be $3. Uh, I have some various supercharger parts left over from previous jobs. I was going to say buy a wire brush, but the kit that I bought came with one. Uh, you're going to need this to keep the metal clean, uh, especially if you're going to be using a flux core rod. Flux core rods leave a white haze on everything you weld, and you have to clean it up, especially if you're going to paint or uh, you just want the weld to look good. So I have no idea if the welds are going to come out that nice, but... We'll see what this welder can do. Uh, the other thing is, this is a welding mask. It's Chicago Electric. I got this from Harbor Freight like uh, probably 10 years ago. Uh, it's adequate. It's auto dimming. You can adjust it. I don't know if you can still get a mask like this for that price. You know, I may put a little uh, headline underneath the video with exact pricing or something. But I would imagine that maybe you might have to spend about 75 maybe $100 now because we're talking 10 years later. Uh, and then you might want to wear a jacket that you don't care about because a lot of times when you're welding, you'll burn through your clothing and you don't want to do it near any painted surfaces. Unfortunately, I'm welding between my motorcycle and my car, so I have to watch to make sure it's not going to be shooting slag all over the place because I don't want to damage the paint in my cars. I don't want to set myself on fire. And uh, what else? I, I don't know what else I could tell you guys. Um, it's, it's a skill, you know, so you might not be good at first, but uh, at least with what I'm trying to show is getting into it on a budget. So I think you could do this for about $150 if you shop around the right way. I have no idea how good this welder is, but you know, I'm not one of those YouTubers that just wants to make content. I wanna make valuable content too. So I'm using this for the first time so you can see what you'll be in store for when it comes to these types of products. I'm hoping it's gonna be good. I'm hoping it's gonna be way better than I thought. Uh, hopefully, you know, it doesn't blow my circuit breakers and it, uh, we're not using a lot of amperage, so I think we'll be okay there. But hopefully it just works and that's why i'm trying to show you how to do it this way because some of these welders can get up to you know the cheapest like high-end welder i've seen is like three or four thousand dollars taylor ray just bought one i think that was like five thousand dollars and it's amazing don't get me wrong but it is not in my budget right now that's for sure especially if i'm only going to do a few little things like this you know i'm not, I'm not building a lot of stuff out of aluminum I, I just want the the project of uh doing the aluminum welding you know i have a couple little things coming up like on the Mustang I'm gonna be building. I'm gonna to have to build some kind of intake system for it. And uh, you know, I might need to weld a couple pieces like this together just so I can get the routing where I need it. So, all right, so I'm gonna set this thing up and we'll see how it works. All right, so sorry, this welder is a little noisy. The first thing I'm going to be doing is practicing on flat aluminum. 
So the first thing I want to do is clean the aluminum. Okay, so the first time I ever welded in my life was just regular steel and it was with a stick welder uh, when I was in mechanic school a hundred years ago. So what I'm going to do today or is show you guys how to start one of these. I remember these being kind of a pain in the butt to get started, so I'm just going to practice starting. A lot of times it won't start. Uh, sometimes you need to cut the tip off, so let's just see what happens first. All right, I just saw increase the amperage to 119. I want to see if it starts. There we go. Okay, I want to cut the tip off of this. That might help it start easier. I also increased the amperage to over 200 to see what happens. Let me try a different approach to grounding this. I'm going to try something. I don't know, maybe this isn't straight aluminum, maybe this is, I mean it says aluminum, maybe it's too dirty. Let me try practicing on this. Just blew the circuit breaker. All right, so here's what happened with this welder. Is it $75? Yes, there's a reason it's $75. I wanted this video to be a video to show everybody how to do these things on a budget, and I chose to learn about this machine while filming for the first time. Uh, unfortunately, this machine is no good. So at 35 amps, I couldn't get the stick to arc. You need a certain amount of amperage to get the stick to arc and start working. I increased the amperage to about 100, it still wouldn't arc. I increased it to 200, I just wanted to see how much amperage it would take to get it to spark off. Once the stick sparks, you can control how, how deep, how long, how far you want the weld to be. Basically by the position of the stick, how far away from the metal the stick is, and then from there I could figure out, let me back it down because you know, maybe I would melt through the metal or maybe I needed to be at 200 amps. So what happened is it's blowing the breakers out in my garage. I tried it on three different breakers and all three breakers just keep blowing out. The reason that's happening is this being a $75 machine, it has no circuit protection internally. Something inside melted. That's why it was $75. So because of this, I don't think this is a good machine to start learning how to weld with. What I think I might do with this video series is I'm going to end up sending this one back. Uh, I, I am probably going to buy the next level up as far as affordability. But what I'm going to do is I learned a lesson today. Because of the non-internal circuit breaker protection, 
anything that is going to be cheap that doesn't have it is going to be a complete waste of money because all it takes is one time for that to go bad and then you're out a perfectly good welder you need to find a welder that has internal circuit protection what do i mean by that let me show you this welder is a welder that i've had for a long time if you look there's a little button here i've had this welder for about 10 years and i have blown breakers before but luckily it has its own protection because it has its own protection it saves my welder. This welder at the time I paid like, uh, I want to say that was about a $400 welder at the time. I don't know what they go for now because it is about 10 years old. Hold on a sec. Let me readjust the camera. I don't know what these welders go for nowadays. I like those welders, especially since it's a wire feed and you can get all your materials at Home Depot. I didn't want to tell a beginner welder to go out and get one of these because this was an aluminum video. Aluminum gets expensive. If you were going to get this welder, add an argon tank, add a spool gun, and then get aluminum wire, you're going to be into this for like $1,000. I was trying to get somebody who can get into aluminum welding for under $150. Bucks. It might be a little higher than that. I don't know. I'm going to figure out what amount of money is going to get us to that point. So that's, I think, going to be the point of this video series. So I'm going to send this one back. I'm going to buy the next level up. Or what I'll do is I'll find the cheapest welder I can get that has some sort of internal circuit protection. That is more important than anything, I think. And I'm glad I learned this lesson and I'm helping you guys learn this lesson as well without having to spend any of the money. Let me spend the money. Um, yeah, so I appreciate you guys uh, kind of watching this and learning with me. I think it's important to do these things if you're ever gonna get into this type of stuff. You know, welding is a trade that I think is not forgotten about, but it's not something that's kind of pushed in school. You're always pushed to go to college, but. I, I remember when I was in school, working with your hands was something that was never pushed. It was always college. It was always maybe art school, um, computer stuff, you know. I did take the route of art, but I also decided early on that I wanted to work with my hands a little more in depth. So I went the technical route, and I did go to a technical school years ago. That's where I learned welding. Uh, I learned how to weld on a stick welder to weld steel. Uh, in fact, the th first thing I ever welded was cast iron, and it was a lot of fun, and, and I got kind of a knack for it. I just never really had a chance to do aluminum welding because it's so expensive and I never really knew what to buy until recently. Yeah, I could have researched it online, but you could ask yourself, how come I waited so long? I really had no need for it, so why bother spending the money? But now I'm trying to figure out a way to do it on a budget. So uh, I appreciate everything. And, uh, you know, garage update wise, uh, the next project I have coming up is going to be the Mustang is getting a Resto Mod done. It's not my car. It's a friend's car. I'm doing a wide body to the Corvette. I have some really cool wide body fenders. I have the engine apart for the Mustang sitting over there. The motorcycle is getting a Cobra exhaust and I have some stuff coming up on the Miata. And if you look over here on the ground, the Miata is getting a supercharger. It's gonna get a really cool uh, supercharger kit. Why is it cool? I'm gonna build it from the ground up. The only thing I'm not making for the car is gonna be the computer that I have to tune and the actual supercharger itself. So those are some cool updates coming. I'll have some stuff on doing the Cobra. Uh, you know how you can build one of these on a budget uh, You know building a v8 swap Miata might be some future stuff I have a lot of really cool things planned and and I really appreciate you guys uh, keeping in touch and letting me know that you like it uh, the reason I'm planning all these things is um, You know you guys who support me. I want to support you and what do I mean by that? I want really cool content you guys enjoy watching because you know, I spend a lot of time watching YouTube and I run out of things to watch because things just don't interest me. So I'm literally making videos that I'm interested in. Sometimes I even watch my own videos just because I like something that I did in it. So, uh, you know, for me, it's like watching a home movie. So uh, I kind of want to make you guys feel the same way, like you're part of my life. And I, I appreciate all the feedback everyone gives me. So uh, thanks again, everybody. Sorry this video was a bust, but like I said, it's going to be a video series. I'm going to have a couple videos on doing this and We'll see what level I can get us at and, and, and what budget I can keep us in. Uh, have a nice day, everybody.